All right, so this is Todd Atkins. I'm here with Miguel Adorade, and uh, we're before we jump into this episode, I want to thank our sponsor, Live to Fight Design. Uh, you can find them on Instagram at Live to Fight Design, and if you use my promo code Todd Atkins, you get twenty dollars off your order. Um, fight banner and gym banners, uh, which you would see in some of the smaller promotions, UFC doesn't allow those, but see them behind fighters. That's what they are, and uh, so we're going to get into this Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis embarrassment from last night and uh miguel i just want you to start out and kind of give your opening uh thoughts on it todd you make me do this sort of thing you know what i mean it's like i i didn't watch it i didn't see it you know and then afterwards with the news and stuff coming out i saw headlines and things and you know when we decided to tape i did put in a couple you know the myths to watch it and things like that and it was a complete waste of my time so um I, I I I'm not a fan of the celebrity boxing stuff and and this stuff and this this card was completely made up of non-boxers and they were in a large arena. It's on pay-per-view. You know, people are watching it and enjoying it, and I guess it generates money. So uh, that's the thing about uh, you know the capitalist society that we live in here is like you know if you make money, just about anything is okay. Um, but what I saw yesterday was on the same level as power slot completely not a sport not people practicing a sport people practicing uh making fools of themselves spectacles and uh you know that's uh attractive i guess this is the, this is the equivalent of you know the ladies watching the kardashians and all those types of train wrecks and things uh on the men's side is just garbage just complete garbage but the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it had Dylan Dennis, who's, <laughs> I don't know what, to me, he's the biggest embarrassment in combat sports. I kind of want your thoughts on Dylan Dennis. I don't know, even know if he's in combat sports. I know, you know, that his jiu-jitsu is solid, and I know that, you know, he, he I think he was a runner-up in Abu Dhabi one year, um, you know, uh, Gordon Ryan and him have had matches, and, you know. That sort at of brown stuff. belt, he was very good. At brown belt, he won no gi worlds and gi in the same year, twenty seventeen. But yeah. once once he got affiliated with Connor and Marcelo Garcia kicked him out of his gym at black belt, he was a good prospect at black belt. But when that all happened, kind of Marcelo Garcia kicked him out of his gym. He got affiliated with Connor. His career just went, and he did have those two wins in Bellator, but since then he's just been a complete embarrassment and i i understand that he i think he, he suffered some type of catastrophic knee injury he and, did you know so he's been going through that and stuff like that and uh you know uh, again in in modern society you know i remember dominic cruz is a guy you, you know that suffered a similar catastrophic knee injury that cost him years off of his career and um dominic's a bit of a big mouth too but he also backed it up, you know, by returning to fight, returning to fight at a high level and having been uh, an extremely high level guy too. Um, more power to him because it's combined with, um, you know, with putting in the work. And and that's what overwhelms me by watching the garbage that we saw yesterday is that, you know, there's nothing about being a high level Marcelo Garcia, brown belt prospect or black belt or, you know, two wins of belt. There's zero of that that qualifies you to box. Zero. And you're not going to tell me that he's spent the last three, two, three years preparing the box. You know what I mean? So, in other words, the, the fight materialized because these guys came across each other on social media. They started to, you know, talk shit, for lack of a, a better term, over it. And that is a justification for people to pay for a fight. And I don't see it. I don't see it. I, what we paid for yesterday was I, I I would rather pay for four rounders of amateurs, you know, go see that and watch low-level boxing there where the guys are at least trying and putting in the work. And then, you know, if you watch, this, this is what's going to – if we ever see Dylan Downs box again, He's not going to get better because he's not really uh, dedicated to it. 
And that's what you could tell. You know, he, he, he learned to keep his hands up. He threw minimal number of punches. And, you know, the punches I saw were like winging punches. So, like, he's throwing big haymakers trying to finish. And there's no technique. There's no nothing there. This was low-level garbage. So, anybody who paid for the pay-per-view, hey, you know, next time, just take your money and put it in the fireplace. We didn't pay for it. So, I mean, let's get that out. I didn't pay for it. But the big thing, and, and this is something I think the promoters should consider. You know, yeah, if you're going to put these guys in the ring, because up and down the card, some of those guys actually showed some ability. Not only did Dylan Dennis, obviously, it didn't look like he prepared much at all. You know, so what did they pay him to go in there and do? You know what I mean? Yeah, he has heat on the internet, and you know, some people may love him. Some most people hate him. Is is kind of the the read I get on him. You know, uh, most people in, in the combat sports think he's crossed over into you know the world of being a little bit of a joke and not a uh, mm -hmm. real professional. You know, um, yeah, you know, look, Don Dennis, I'm I'm certain. That he can kick my 50 year old ass. You know what I mean? It's not, I'm not saying he's not tough at a certain level, but the practice of sport is supposed to come with some dedication. And, you know, thankfully, we don't see this in things like the NFL and baseball because the, uh, you know, the refinement of those sports, you just, you know, you're never going to hit a 100 mile an hour fastball cold off the street. You know, it's just not going to happen. Uh, um, but in this case, you, you know, and there's always that saying, you don't play boxing, you know, because boxing is, is serious. And, and this really doesn't take boxing serious. Doesn't take boxing seriously. And I, I, I'll tell you, eventually what will happen is somebody will get hurt. Um, I, I compared it to power slap. You know, one of the things that... Uh, has slowed down that power slap, you know, other than Dana, you know, disengaging kind of. So, you know, he was a, a big force pushing it, but you know, there've been other versions of it. Like uh, the Paul brothers, I think uh, hooked up with Arnold Schwarzenegger and set up a league at some point, but power slap there, there's been a death. I don't know if you came across this, oh, but really? there was, yeah, there was a guy that got killed in Poland. He, uh, he got knocked out. He, you know, they carried him off. They carried him off. And he didn't recover. And, uh, you know, un unless, you know, some of the news out there that I saw was fake, you know, that's what's going to happen in this. At some point, somebody who has no business doing this is going to get seriously hurt. And hopefully that will stop the whole thing. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point before this type of thing trails off. I hope that there's buyer's remorse up the yin yang for this fight that everybody who spent money goes man it would have been better it would have been we would have if we put it in the fireplace and burnt our money at least we get some warmth it, it, it's money better spent than watching this crap and that's the bottom line i want to ask you though as a promoter let's say you put this on i know you wouldn't have but let's say you did the fight happens exactly the way it happened and you're backstage after did you get any return on what you paid for these guys to fight? I mean, there was a lot of people there. I don't know how many people came to see Dylan Dennis. They did have a fight afterward, Tommy Fury and KSI. But what return did you get? Do you feel like they got a return? Do you think they were satisfied with that? At the end of the day, in this case, all they're caring about is a plus on the money. Again, this, this has become the... Uh, rhetoric and, and, and the storyline in this modern era of, of combat sports is that the only thing that matters is to make money. And, you know, I mean, it, we live in a capitalist society, so it's hard to say like that's wrong and stuff like that. But now with this type of stuff, you've crossed over into really disrespecting the sport. Again, how much did Dylan Dennis make for this shit? No idea. I mean, that's why we can't say what did they pay but, versus what did they get? And here's the point. Uh, Jake, uh, it's not Jake Paul. It's the other Paul. You know, Logan, I, Logan Paul, yeah. He made some money. 
Mm -hmm. But he's a, he's a businessman. He, he monetizes everything. So he made money here. But let me present this to you. Let's say he made a million dollars. I wonder how that paycheck compares to Errol Spence and Crawford's paycheck. Because we saw guys that have dedicated their entire lives to the craft of boxing. We saw guys that going into that fight had separated themselves from everybody else there and put it on the line and risked it. And in my opinion, Terrence Crawford shined. You know, Spence is fantastic. But Terrence Crawford separated himself, showed the world what the number one boxer in the world looks like today. In my opinion, Terrence Crawford is better than Floyd Mayweather. If Jake Paul made anywhere in the neighborhood of the same money doing the same thing, you know, with Ter as Terrence Crawford, then there's something just grossly and disgustingly wrong with the way everything is going here. Uh, you know, the other part of it is, is that uh, I don't even know. I, this fight was in England. Mm -hmm. Manchester. Was the, Brit was the British Boxing Board of Control involved in this? Did they sanction these fights? No idea. I, I'm, I'm sure we can find that out, but if that could be a, 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 another aspect of it is once again, the boxing commissions are proving to be paper pushers and bureaucrats that kowtow to money because they, what they need to be doing is they need to be protecting the sanctity of the sport. So if there's a, a gross mismatch, like, you know, the world champion facing a guy who's 0-0, those matches shouldn't happen. You know, in Ngannou and Fury's uh, case, I could see an exception because Ngannou is a guy who's a very serious athlete. But Jake Paul and Logan Paul, you know, they've started, you know, preparing and stuff like that. But not on the level of those other guys, you know, and, and certainly Dylan Dennis didn't take pre preparation seriously for this. Um, At all. Not in, yeah, not in terms, like, you know, he's an athlete and yeah, he's a tough guy and, and, and all that. But to go into a boxing match and throw under 10 punches, it's just not even, is, is, is not even, it, it, it's something that you, it should be, that the commissions and the sanctioning bodies are aware enough of what's going on that they will not allow the match in the first place. And that to me is, is, is what is happening here, but the Paul brothers roll in and they've got their little money-making machine and all their millions of people on the internet that follow them. And all of a sudden, you know, the rules go out the window and it's justified because money can be made. At the end of the day, that money really goes, you know, to Logan Paul and uh, KSI you know. and Tommy Fury, probably. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, the money goes to the same guys. It's not like, you know, there's going to be great opportunities for everybody. It's like they're going to now Logan. And, and here's the other sickening part of it is. Is, again, the capitalism is, you know, gone awry. It's just wrong at this point because the commentary, the people doing the commentary on these fights are the biggest prostitutes there because if they're supposed to be doing announcing for sport, I would just say, like, you know, if they had offered that to Joe Rogan, Rogan probably would have said, ah, I ain't going to do that. Maybe it would make the money, but it would be a very different tone than UFC when he's serious because Rogan knows what he's doing. But professional announcers should even be involved in this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And not only do they go in there, but they go in there, I don't want to say scripted, but definitely uh, uh, pushed in a certain direction. Like, you know, they're, they're heading into the room. Look at the shape Logan Paul is in. Wall and the, you know he's throwing punches at the air or punches at the other guy's gloves. Now look at the power, you know, absolute prostitutes. I saw Teddy Atlas tweeting about it, like yeah, it, giving yeah. analysis. Yeah, who Teddy's was paying? Someone had to have been paying him to do that. I don't think he was doing that on his own time. 
Here, here's, here, this is why the capitalism has been broken maybe more lo longer than we think, you know? A guy like Teddy Atlas, with all he's done, you know, tight, uh, he should be doing all right with money now. He mm -hmm. shouldn't be needing to grab money this way. You know, another another prostitute in this is uh, Michael Buffer. You know, just because they can pay your fee, you go out there and you give it your all, and now there is that uh, crossing of the lines with the general public. It starts to look like a boxing event when they get these guys that decide to lower themselves and play along, you know? So, and then that's what the prostitution part of it is, is because the only reason they do it is for money. If, if Michael Buffer, even in, in Teddy, I don't blame so much because I don't count Teddy in my book as, you know, a multimillionaire already, you know? So yeah, Teddy's still putting in, in work and needs money. So, okay, whatever. But he, he may fall into this category too. I, how can they lend their names right. to this? You know, to me, it's cheap. If I if I were a real boxing promoter now, I would never hire these clowns. But you know, the the, the world doesn't work that way. Yeah, somebody's like, look at this. Teddy Atlas is actually tweeting about this event, and I put, I retweeted, and I said, how sad is this? Yeah, I, I that a guy I, like I, Teddy Atlas has to lower himself to tweeting about this event. I know he just didn't get up and say, I got to watch this and I'm so excited. I got to come on Twitter and tweet seriously about it. Someone had to pay him to do that. Yeah, or, or yeah, he's going to monetize in some way. Maybe he'll cut a video, put it on his channel, you know, whatever, whatever it is, he's looking to make money. And again, on an individual basis, if they're not doing well or didn't make their riches in, in their first go around, you, you, you excuse it a little bit. And Teddy to me is a guy with, a, a, an ocean of boxing knowledge. And and I present to you that his involvement in this begins to blur the lines and is really hurtful to this. Buffer is another one to a certain extent. You mean to tell me that all the fights that Buffer's seen, the real fights, that he gets excited about this crap? No. All he cares about is, is, a, is a deposit made and that's it. And he'll go out there and put on his show. But it's just it's it's out of control. I I will let, let's talk. On the same evening, people may remember British fans will remember Costa Zoo. Yep. Costa Zoo was a murderer. Yeah. And uh, you know, eventually I think he ended his career with a loss to Ricky Hatton, which is the tie in to the Brits. You know, but Costa Zoo's a Hall of Fame level boxer. Yeah. And uh his son fought. Mm -hmm. on the same day his son is now up to like 23 and 0 and looking like a world beater looking like a second generation thoroughbred you know and we have a few of those in boxing nigel ben's son connor even chris eubank and chris eubank jr you know uh ricky hatton himself his son is boxing you could add up the paychecks for all of those guys in their last fight, and Jake Paul made more money. And if you don't think that's wrong, then I, I you know, then I, I, I don't have any further conversation for you because it starts with that the respect for the sport. You have, you know, to me, the second generation fighters that we're looking at now are, are a very interesting story because the pedigree of the guys that I just talked about are they're Hall of Famers, all of them, Nigel Ben. Uh, Chris Eubank, Ricky Hatton, you know, Costa Zoo. These are all Hall of Famers. We have the example of um, Floyd, where he surpassed the previous generation from his family because he had his uncle and his father box. Surpassed him, woo, went flying, you know, went way over what they did. And they were great. Roger and, and, and Floyd Sr. were great boxers. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the example of Julio Cesar Chavez, where his son, couldn't live up to the expectations. So the storylines and there's real interest. If in the case of, of Tim Zoo, if he surpasses his father, then we're looking at a, a fantastic boxer for the next 10 years. 
and he's toiling away, making probably, I don't know, at this level, he may have made 50 grand for that fight. You know, I, I, I'm speculating. But it, if you're a boxing fan, Tim Zhu's fight should have been much more on the radar than the crap that was going on in Manchester the day, the, on the same day. To the point where it's like, I, I missed it. I didn't even realize that was going on today because I don't care. And I'm forced to care by you. <laughs> but, no, you know, it made, it made the news cycles and things. And, again, this made the news cycles. This was on the BBC's website, on sports websites across the board. They were putting up headlines of what's going on here. You know, Joan Janice ends in brawl or whatever, the, you know, whatever it was. No headlines. Um, second generation Zhu got, uh, kind of second generation fighter Tim Zhu looks like the real deal could surpass his father. That's that's so much more compelling. It's so much more real. Yeah, we should do a show on the on these second generation guys. The reason I wanted to do this one though is because yeah. I really wanted to focus on Dennis because, in my opinion, I want to ask you this because I know I asked you about the promotion part. Yeah, I know you wouldn't have put on this fight. And you're saying money over everything, which I get. But if you have enough fans that are ticked off about what they got, because Dylan didn't give us anything. If they paid to get something, if they thought they were going to get some grudge match or some kind of, you know, heated back and forth fight, Dennis gave him nothing. He didn't prepare for the fight, and then he didn't fight either. If enough people you are know, ticked off, does that outweigh making the money? You know, it, it, the fight, could the boxing commission, if they are involved, could a boxing commission actually come in and hold up his paycheck? Because, I mean, that's tantamount to what should happen here. And no, but nobody's going to operate that. No, this was a circus that was allowed to happen. Everybody on the planet you know, just watch it go forward. And, and the only reason I bring up the second generation is because Tim Zhu fought on the same day, mm -hmm. made a lot less money, and you can't even compare the... Le it's like Tim Zhu is, at this point, a graduate student. And rather than go see a dissertation from him on something intelligent, you go watch first graders. Because that's the difference. That's what you watch. And Logan Paul is nothing but a first grade level garbage boxer that I should never make a cent off of this sport. Go sell water. Yeah. Yeah, it, for me, it's just, uh, I mean, I know some other people talk bad about Dennis, but to me, this really, it left a sour taste in my mouth because I had a feeling he was going to go in there and do that you know, that he wasn't going to compete, and he didn't, you know, he didn't try to compete, and to me, that you're taking the fans money when you do that, and yeah, yeah. But it's one you, thing you're... to have guys who aren't prepared, and they go out there, and they have a box of match, one gets beat up, or whatever, or it's just a bad showing, but they're trying, that's a difference, he yeah. purposely went out there, and didn't try, and, you know, now you're taking fans' money, and you're, you know, that that's different to me. Yeah, but you know, again, his class, he's let he let you know, you, like you said, you thought he might do this. Yeah, any mm -hmm. any observer of him in his social media and stuff, and I wonder if isn't there like a storyline where like didn't he post like pictures of X-rated something about like Logan Paul's wife, like mm -hmm. so that they could say. Logan's fighting for his wife's honor. I mean, she's Logan's suing Logan. him. She's suing him over this. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I would bet money that that is a, a fake lawsuit. That 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 was all worked up to hype this fight up. And uh, we'll see if we'll see you know if it goes through. But Dylan has had problems like that before. He's shown himself to be you know. He's a guy who's had hackers, you know, go after people and stuff like that. And um, yeah, 
his, his involvement is now you're crossing over into like you're actually bringing in a guy that is is not a good person. Yeah. And you know you're you're dealing with a guy who'll do anything uh, for attention except train and fight. And you know that to me is like uh, uh, every fan that paid for that yesterday and is disappointed that's on them that's on the fans dylan go cash the check if you know if it doesn't get held up i hope it does but that's just my fantasy right but dylan go cash your check because people are still giving you money it's like there's no problem on dylan's end he just did what he always does and he's cashing in on that, that, that like i said the comparison to the real boxes is, is tragic it's just yeah. tragic yeah, it's. I think that this at some point this is all going to go away. This YouTube boxing, you know. But I think that was the low point to me. That was the low point because at least these other fights, guys were trying to win. You know, may not have been a good showing as far as what you want to see, but they were trying to win. What we saw the other night was one guy just. He went in there and purposely didn't try to win. It was like Andy Kaufman or something, you know? Like, look. Like I said, if, if you're spending your money on this and you're paying attention to this, you're really not a, a fan of, of, of the sweet science. You know, you're a fan of the YouTube channels and, and, you know, you're a Logan Paul fan. And, you know, with millions of followers and stuff, I'm, I'm assuming, obviously... That you know they have some star power that way, but you know, yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. It's like you know, we, uh, they should go do something else, you know. But this uh, again, you know, they're they're big, fit young men, and they think they could do this. But I'm telling you, as a you know, I'll, I'll, not to toot my own horn, but as a combat sports expert, that what they do is not anything close to the lowest level of the sport what you saw there is stuff that belongs in a war memorial or a vfw hall in front of 40 people and they should be bombarded with beer cans at the end of it instead you got you know a twenty thousand seat arena filled with people that wanted to throw their money away you know, I'll give you an example. There's a Filipino guy who fought on the undercard. I don't know if you saw him. Salt Pappy is what he calls himself. But he lost a, a ton of weight. You know, he used to be pretty heavy. <clears throat> and uh, occasionally I message with him on Instagram. And one thing I, I told him was, you know, he lost a lot of weight over a short period of time. A lot. And I was saying, yeah, you might be in shape now, but there's a good chance you're not going to be able to take as good a punch. And you probably won't have the same kind of power you have when you were more flabby, yeah. you know, because you, you don't have as much weight. But he got knocked out. He got stopped. The guy he fought, even though it was at a lighter weight, that guy always fought at that weight. You know, that guy was taller than him, a little bit taller. But, you know, he was slim. That's why they called him slim, you know. So he was always fighting him that way, and he wasn't. So he drops down, he fights at this weight, and he gets stopped in about four rounds or so. You know, he did good in the early, maybe the first two rounds. but they're... So what I'm saying is guys who are not even professional boxers, they're regular people like you and me, they don't have this experience of knowing these kind of things. Even their trainers maybe don't. And, you know, they drop a ton of weight. They don't ease them into you know, getting it, fighting in a new way. Because even professional side. boxers, guys who train their whole lives, when they drop down, they struggle going up and down. You know, yeah, they have no, to get no. used to the new way. You know, we've seen weight loss yeah. shows. Like, yeah. you know, shows where everybody goes in a house and, you know, the guy who loses the least weight goes home and everybody's trying to lose weight. How does that qualify you to box? And no, you know, in, in boxing, I think it was George Foreman that said it. It, it is like jazz. 
the more sophisticated it gets, it seems to turn people off. Like people don't understand it anymore. I think that's a little bit of what is going on here because there's no respect for the actual sweet science. And that's, that's the real problem with this is uh, again, like, uh, you know, Terrence Crawford at the age of 14, you know, was in, in a van driving eight hours to go and do his amateur boxing, putting in the work. Right. And that's what I mean. Your serious trainers aren't going to put a regular guy in there, you know, and do some of these mistakes that, you know, these guys are doing that I just mentioned. So that's another well, reason why it's kind of irresponsible, I would say. Look, I if if I were to uh you know inherit a billion dollars, I might get back in the fight game and make some matches. Right? So like let's say I, I said, Oh look, I want to see so and so fight so and so, you know, let's do some of the fights that we haven't seen yet. I mean, let's do a Ryan Garcia Gervonta Davis rematch. You know, I, I could hire the best pros in the world. Let's do some MMA. Let's do, you know, and, and with the money, you got it there. If I don't pay my promoter's license and I don't pay the fees associated with making an event, despite the fact that it's the highest level of professionalism in every other manner. If I don't pay off the boxing commissions and their fees, the police will show up and they will shut down my event. And I present to you that that is what should have happened. Not because they didn't pay their fees, they paid their fees, but the event should have been shut down when they went to pay their fees. The commission should have said, yeah, we we're not going to do this. And it should be illegal. It would be illegal that way. And that is the way the boxing commission should, the boxing commissioners should look at this and think and worry about the sanctity of the sport first, not the money. They're bureaucrats that have a salary that isn't a billion dollar salary and the fees for boxing licenses and things are $75 and, you know, things like that usually not big money. So anytime somebody comes along and goes, yeah, but this is going to be a million dollar payday and stuff like that, you know, they seem to go, well, okay, we'll allow it. And that's precisely what they should not do. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I get a billion dollars, I'm going to buy a, a cruise ship and do boxing in the middle of the ocean where nobody can regulate me. <laughs> And I don't don't give Dana White any ideas. Yeah, he'll probably, he'll probably have people slapping each other. He'll have people slapping each other in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, he can afford a cruise liner too, so I better yeah. shut up. But that was a, a battleship idea in MMA. <laughs> battleship, yeah, I remember that. Remember so, battleship. Yeah, being silly, but the idea was get it out of the sanctioning bodies' faces. But at that point, you have a promoter that's legitimately going to put that on. And Gravante Davis and Ryan Garcia are legitimate guys, th them being the example there. You know what I mean? And uh, so with that fight going on, on a boat, no boxing commission can do that. You think Gravante Davis would say, well, I want to pay my boxing license. No, they would do it and they would take their money. And it would be the you know a boxing match on the level of the one, you know, their first match. Because... That's what boxing is. Not rappers and water salesmen and uh, punks and, you know, jujitsu black belts doing this. So why, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou in a jujitsu match with a gi. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want to see jujitsu people throw up? You know what I mean? It's like, what would Gordon Ryan do to those guys? He would, he, you know... It, it's a complete disrespect, but because you just do a little bit of a different sport, it's inconceivable. It's inconceivable, right? But imagine that somebody was trying to sell that because that's the level that we saw yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, as you always, all 
you know, I always appreciate your insight because I wanted to ask you about this really because of the Danis issue. Um, but you know, I always appreciate your insight on these kind of things. And uh, do you have anything kind of new you want to add as far as the the dog rescue goes, or from last time we yeah. talked? No, work work uh with with uh with the animals is a daily task. You know, I uh have some few things I'm gonna go out and do. Uh, right now, actually, we have a cat in a vet. You know, so dogs and cats and things like that. That I'm gonna have to go pick up and things like car little cat got run over, and it's a street cat, so um, we'll have to take care of it and things like that. I I don't know if we can find an adopter. I don't want to put her back out on the street, but these are the kinds of things I'm worried about now, and it really you know soothes my soul a little bit now that you got me all riled up. Yeah, you probably need it after that. I can't believe it. Nanganu and Fury in a gi jujitsu match. Yeah. I wonder how many people pay for that nonsense. Yeah, I'm I'm sure the guy uh God, what's his name? Mo Mo Jassim, who's running Abu Dhabi, would be thrilled if that happened. Yeah, but, hey Mo, why, why don't we bust out with that as a super fight? Yeah, he'd I mean, be I'll, I'll, I'll even do it this way for you, Mo. It doesn't have to be a gi. We could do no gi jujitsu with Fury and Ngannou. Yeah, I'm sure. Ngannou should win that. Ngannou he'd be over the moon with that, I'm sure. Yeah, it, no, no. What he would say is. You know, send him to a qualifier, and not one of those guys would make it through a qualifier. Right, right. You know, and that's sport. So, Mo, hats off to you, man. Yeah. Well, you know, as always, appreciate your input, and uh, everybody donate to the dog rescue if you can. I, as always, I have it in the show notes. I'm going to make a video on this, I think. And Miguel's going to send me some footage, but I think I'll splice up uh, some of his uh, comments here from the end of these videos. And uh, as always, everyone that supports our shows here, we appreciate it and subscribe and share it with somebody if you liked it. And as always, we appreciate support and uh, take care.